uh, events when they go so fast that we start being able to really assess what's happening and, and we call this in Arabic uh, fitna, which is a very beautiful word. Uh, fitna means tribulation, civil strife, but it comes from a root word. It, ha it has two meanings. It means to attract uh, fitna, and the Arabs actually call a beautiful woman uh, fitana, uh, because she seduces and she attracts. And the nature of, of uh, strife and things is that there is a seductive aspect uh, to it. Uh, there's an excitement uh, that uh, suddenly everything's infused with excitement. Suddenly people are experiencing uh, life at a, a much more intense level. Uh, one of the things when I, I worked in a, uh, a critical care unit for a time, and, and uh, I, I floated a few times into uh, the intensive care unit, and w one of the things about intensive care uh, physicians is uh, they get very excited when, when real trauma comes in. It's a very intense time, and you, you go into what the Americans call the zone, or, or the flow, where suddenly everything's almost magical because it's so intense that people are working at a very heightened level, and, and, and you, you, there's, there's almost a serenity in the, the madness. But what I was really fascinated by was the fact that a lot of these people uh, when they had their days off, they used to go jump out of airplanes or, or jump off bridges with elastic rubber bands uh, because the intensity of their normal life uh, in the hospital, uh, they actually wanted to repeat that. It's a, it's a type, what they call adrenaline rush, that people begin to crave this excitement. And one of the things about Islam is that it really looks on that state as a pathological state. It sees it as actually something very pathological. Uh, that w one of the beauties of Islam is that it takes the perfunctory, it takes the everyday experience of life, and it infuses it with such a profound meaning and intensity that tea becomes a really beautiful experience. It's going and visiting uh, a scholar uh, sitting uh, in the masjid after Fajr uh, and experiencing that stillness. Uh, these are the actual moments that Muslims who have really worked on themselves begin to look forward to and it's the madness of the dunya that they actually flee from. And this is why Ibn Omar uh, during the time there was a fitna in which uh, the Muslims began to uh, fight and the claim during the period was that they were fighting to establish social justice, which is always the claim uh, of whenever you have fighting, it's always about social justice, uh, redressing the iniquities of the world. They went to Ibn Omar and they asked him to enlist his help uh, in their cause. And he said, during the time, and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, during the time of the Messenger of Allah, we used to fight for the sake of God. But you people are fighting for power. And, and he was speaking to the Tabi'een. And he actually refused uh, to, he broke his sword during that time. He, he refused to raise his sword. Because when Muslims raise their sword, uh, traditionally, it was always seen as the surgeon's knife. The Arabs have a proverb, they say, Akhrud Dawal Kay. The last resort in medicine is cauterization. Uh, you don't use it unless you have to, to stop excessive hemorrhaging. And that was always the idea of war. It was seen as the last resort. It was seen as something that you didn't want to start it because sometimes once it started, it got so out of hand, you couldn't stop it. And I want everybody to reflect on the fact that in 23 years of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, his message, less than 2,000 people died on both sides. People forget that when they think of the tradition of Islam as being this militant tradition, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, despised the shedding of blood, and he is a man who never once shed blood. Never once. And the only man that he is known to have killed, he threw a rock at him and hit him in the neck, and there was no blood. And when the man left, 
He said, Qad qatali, qad qatalani Muhammad. Muhammad's killed me. And they said, there's nothing wrong with you. And he said, no, he swore he would kill me. And he never swears anything, but he fulfills his oath. And the man died shortly thereafter. But the Prophet Muhammad never shed blood. And he despised the shedding of blood. And he said, that tamannu liqa al-adu. Never desire to meet your enemies. What I can is said Allah al-afiyya. But ask Allah for security in your societies and well-being. فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُوهُمْ فَثْبُتُوا But if you're forced to meet them, be brave. So the idea of desiring war is a pathology. And it should be seen as such. It's a human pathology. Uh, and war has an attraction to young people, which is why uh, young men are always the fodder of war. Because there's something very attractive uh, to young men about war. Uh, that's why little boys tend to play. I don't care what you say about socialization. I know there's social scientists in here. It's a load of rubbish. Because I have four boys. And they love swords. And they love hitting uh, each other. And you see the girls want to play tea. And do normal human things. The boys want to kill. They want to shed blood. Uh, and I, it's not about socialization. It's about hormones. Uh, it's about uh, the fact that uh, men are dealing with testosterone, uh, which is a very dangerous hormone. And women who have been put on testosterone treatments have known to become very aggressive. Uh, women are the humanizing element in the world. And if there's any hope for us, it's in our women. And I believe that. If there's any hope for humanity, it's, it's, it's in our women. Because rahmah is from the woman. It doesn't come from the man. It's from the woman. Allah has put the rahim in the woman. The womb is from the woman. It's not from the man. And that, that is what makes a woman uh, unique. Uh, she, she, she has something that men do not have. She has the womb. And that's the source of mercy uh, in the world according to the Qur'an.